All right. So, and let me fix this. All right. So, um, today I will be talking to you about um, this grouping that we put together. How do I convert a script to a package? It chapters or it, it covers chapters uh, six and eleven. Oops, sorry. So chapters six and eleven from the current version of the book, which is the package within and vignettes. Um, and um, we'll see if I can convert anyone to my uh, preferred way of writing packages and working in R in general. All right. So I am merging these two chapters into what I call vignette-driven development. Um, so a vignette is, as they say in the book, a long-form guide to your package. Um, it's like a, a help doc on how to do a, or how to solve a specific problem using your package or a set of problems using your package. It's an R Markdown doc. So if you've worked in R Markdown, you can make a vignette. And this is how I do almost everything I do in R day-to-day -day is I write vignettes and build packages around them. So um, you can see if you think I'm crazy at the end of this, but I think it works really well. All right, so how do we do this? I start any analysis or whatever project I might be doing as a vignette in either a new package or usually it's in an existing package. And I, I have all these packages that I maintain to do this, but I still think it makes it easier. Um, and then kind of following the, uh, the code that they show in the book, first thing you wanna do is like separate your analysis from your helper functions. And then you move your helper functions into the package. And then, you know, the reason this makes sense for me is then you reuse your helper functions. Um, I have lots of, you know, data cleaning scripts and whatever that I use all the time. So uh, for different analyses, they, they still fit together into one package. And so let's try it. Um, I'm gonna build a package by converting the script from chapter six into a vignette and building a package around it. All right, so I'm going to create this package within and I do it by just using use this create package and then give it the path to where I want the directory. This happens to be, um, I'm starting it from within the uh, book club repo. So I wanna go up a directory and um, <laughs> hold on a second, no way. Cause I need to delete the place where I rehearsed it earlier today. And let me make sure that I thought I had deleted the repo, but let's make sure. <laughs> uh, oops. Okay, good. So <laughs> now let's try that again. Um, uh, nope. And let's uh, make sure that that is still deleted. All right, now let's try this again. Uh, one thing that I like in um, use this is she builds in these, and actually Hadley talked about this at when we had the uh, interview with him a few weeks ago, that there are these questions that are, when she needs to ask you a question, they're out of order. Each time it's a different thing. You have to find where yes or no is. And she does that. Two of them are no, one of them's yes. So that you can't just automatically go, you know, two, 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 two. Oh crap. I said, yes. I didn't mean to say yes. Um, I like that a lot, but all right. So this created this package. Oops. And um, I'm going to just do a quick cleanup on the description that I auto created. We, I'll show you what it, what that's for, but we're going to talk about this more in a few weeks. And I'm just setting the title for the package, which is title case kind of explaining what it's for and the description um, that it's what it, again, what it's for. We're going to go into in depth about this in chapter eight but I just want those to be set up because the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and um, create a GitHub repo. So I'm gonna use Git. I'm not gonna do it the way that uh, Tan did, but I'm gonna use the use this function. So yep, I'm gonna use Git. And uh, yes, I want to restart our studio. And 
Uh, oops, and I want to save because I meant to hit save. So we'll see how that actually goes because I wasn't paying attention. Okay, all good. And then um, use GitHub and that will actually set up a repo and I'm gonna put it in there. I'm gonna have it show up there. So it'll create the repo. Um, let's see. <laughs> Not now. What did I do? So of course I managed to screw it up because I had the commit or the description change. Um, update the description. Because it's confusing that description function or the description file has a description field. But anyway, so. Sorry that I'm rushing through these things. These are supposed to just be uh, on the side things, but all right. So title and description are okay. That's why I set them up that way. And it uses those to create the GitHub repository. And it should do that automatically. And there we go. And there we go. Now we have a GitHub repo. And if I remember, my goal here is to try to do commits after like each step of this so that the repo will kind of show how this was built and you'll be able to review it and go through the history and uh, see. So we'll see how that actually works. All right, so now I go back to the slides to see what we're gonna do next. So now we're just gonna create this vignette and again, use this as a function to do it. Um, the, the two, uh, arguments here are the name, meaning file name, and the title. Um, you can leave the title blank and it'll create the title from the file name, but it, you know, usually the idea is you want something that is file name like and then something that is a description of what your vignette is. So using the example from chapter six, we are working with swim data, or I could say like cleaning Cleaning swim data would be another valid title. So let's go ahead and call it that. Um, this sets up your basic vignette, which has this the block at the top where it has the title. And then separately, it has the index entry that will show up for, for that title. What that means is for like a package, let's say dplyr, which has vignettes, um, these are the index entries, which happen to be the same as the titles, because actually it's not the same. Oh, Deplier is uh, in Deplier and base R is the title, but from base R to Deplier is the vignette entry. So it just happened that I uh, have found one where they are different. I always keep them the same. There's not much. I don't. I actually don't know why they ha don't have them the same there, but whatever. Um. And then it also puts these like setup blocks that just uh, I have never changed uh, any of those. And if anyone has any reasons to do so, let us know. But they it works for any vignette you're setting up. Has anyone done anything weird? And I'm mostly looking at you, Tyler, because I feel like you would have something cool to do there. Okay, then no, then never change those. All right. What else did I say? Oh, and then, you know, the idea is you just start like explaining whatever this process is that you're going to do. So I'm kind of copying the idea of what's in the chapter, but it's just in text, explain what your analysis is or what your project is or what you're going to do. And it's just like any other RMD, if you've worked in RMDs before, that you can mix uh, prose and code. And so I'm just putting in some sample of what that might start out as. And, um, okay, and then I have a file that I am going to copy into this project. Again, this is just kind of to get the boilerplate going of they have this sample CSV that I'm copying into this. If I were work doing a real thing, I would just put this into the project. Um, you know, I would create this in the project. And then I'm going to do my very first, oh, and actually before I do my first control shift B, I am going to 
configure my build tools, I always like to um, document every time I install and restart a package. Uh, I don't know why this isn't the default because, uh, well, okay, they say it takes time to document, especially on a giant project. It can take a long time to document, but um, in I've never had this be anywhere near a limiting factor. So always turn on and uh, document when you install and restart, in my opinion. All right. And then we'll do our first control shift B uh, after saving that project. What this is doing, this is actually building our package, which has nothing in it yet. But um, the point of this is do this all the time. Uh, you want to be testing. When we get to the testing chapters, you would also uh, run your tests at this point. But the idea is just always, 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 always be building and testing. And the main reason I do that is because you can't build your vignettes until you have built the package once, because it's going to library your package at the beginning. Right now, there's nothing in the package, but it, if it didn't exist, it would fail. Now we can, if we really want, build this vignette. It doesn't show us anything, but it exists. All right. Um, I know I am rushing through these beginning parts, but uh, does anyone have any questions so far? What does within do? Oh, so the point of this is, uh, this is the package within is the name of the chapter. And it's a... It. It's yeah, it is the package that they built in chapter six and it's um, built around doing this analysis of swim data. So maybe a more realistic name would be, you know, like swim or swim uh, R, I guess. Um, so, so that's the actual package we're making here. But yeah, so this is the actual Got package it. that we're making out of this swim data. Got it. Okay. Sorry. Uh, no problem. And I am going to go ahead and commit uh, oops. and say set up vignette. All right. And so let's see, what am I doing next? All right. So now we're going to work with some code blocks. Um, I don't know how much you've worked in our markdown, uh, but I do the R shift tab to insert R blocks all the time. And I'm going to do a clean data block. I don't care about options for this one. And this is where I'm gonna just copy, it's a version of what they have in chapter six. It's kind of in between alpha and beta, or alpha and bravo. Um, I'm writing this more like what probably most of us would start with if we were just writing analysis. It's using tidyverse. It's, uh, it's not quite all cleaned into functions like they have in Bravo, but it's also not all base R like they had in alpha. Um, so the idea is then within this, I'm just writing my script. Um, so I write my library tidyverse. Uh, I'll just go through really quickly what they do. They tell you where the file is. They read it in with read CSV. Um, they specify the column types because they want it to always work for their standard file type, or I guess our standard file type. Uh, they set up a lookup table of um, the names for a beach versus whether that's US English or UK English. And they join that column onto their data. Um, we convert, for, for anyone in the US, we're converting from Fahrenheit to Celsius. We assume that it's in uh, Fahrenheit. And then we're gonna look at our data when we're done there. And actually I can, you know, I'll do that in a minute. Um, and then we use the system time to create a file name. Uh, I had to change, they, they use the um, month name, but, and I know they did it to show off like how um, system locale can confuse things, but I just couldn't do that. I'm using the month uh, number because you would never use the month name and a file name in my opinion. Uh, they clean up the path using some uh, regex and then they create an out file name and then they write it. And so all of those steps are, th they're saying, you know, the idea is of this package that these are things we do all the time with in incoming swim data. So it'd be nice if instead of having this fragile manual script, we had a package that did this processing for us. So that's what we're gonna create. Um, and let me make sure, 
Okay, and then so the the piece I'm going to do here, and actually I am going to save this. So um, uh, starting point of Um, so what we're going to do, the first thing we do whenever you're working with packages is um, if you're creating a package, you don't want library or you don't have library calls inside of the package. So let's get rid of that library tidyverse and anywhere where we uh, call a function um, from a package, we just uh, fully qualify it. We put the package name colon colon before the function name. Um, that's because the package doesn't, you don't want a library inside of a package. If you're librarian, you're, you're number one, you're overdoing it, but you have to kind of break your package to do that. Um, but I am going to try to reduce or, or minimize the number of different packages that I'm or replying on, <laughs> re relying on. So dplyr, triple, um, we're going to dplyr left join, dplyr mutate dplyr if else and i think there's yeah one more yeah down here there's the right csv as we are all right so now we have everything's fully qualified without the library call and in theory um in theory this would work yes so we'll go ahead and build the vignette we'll control shift k Oh, it didn't work. And we'll see. Uh, yeah, sad trombone. It doesn't work because our package doesn't know what the pipe is. And personally, in all of my data analysis packages, I just re-export pipe because I don't want to have to work without a pipe. Um, I am going to save it before that, though. So uh, let me move library. Um, But that there is an easy fix for this and use this. You don't have to remember what the function is. You just type pipe and it says, oh yeah, it's use pipe. And what that does is it uh, sets your package up to import and export the pipe. Again, I do this in almost like, I wouldn't do this in every CRAN package I'm working on, but any package I'm working on for work, I just like using the pipe. So I, I put the pipe into my packages. Um, and now if we try to build this vignette, oops, it won't work because I forgot to control shift B to document and build my package. And now, now it works. Now it can build that vignette. It's not very exciting. Um, it's still just a giant script and I don't have any actual functions in my package other than the pipe, but it works. Does anyone have any questions at this point? I was curious why you wouldn't um, use this method to bring the pipe over for CRAN. Uh, it depends. I would I would think about it for CRAN. Like I don't just willy nilly export the pipe in every package for CRAN. Um, but if it makes sense to, also I would do it for other packages. It's basically whether like pipe, um, you know, whether you want that uh, requirement that that import in your package that your package breaks if McGritter breaks. Um, McGritter is not that big of a deal, really, but just in general, try to minimize the number of things you import from is kind of a, um, a good rule of thumb. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So let's see where we are. Um, we're at the bottom of that. It worked. All right, so now what we're gonna do to move this towards a package is let's um, organize our code. And so the way I'm gonna organize it, I've got this big clean data block, but you know we get to this point where we've got the clean data and then we write the data. So I'm gonna make a separate block for write data and I'm gonna move this stuff down into that block and you know, in a real, when I'm taking the full uh, vignette, I would say, um, and then 
we write the data to a standard file form or file name or whatever. Um, usually there's a lot more free text when I'm doing a real package uh, for work or you know doing real analysis, but that's the general idea. Now we've got these two sections and really um, they don't do it in theirs, but I would probably make a read data section because even though this is pretty simple, it is some specific rules and they never actually pull those off into a function. Um, but the idea is trying to simplify as much as possible and we'll see what that means in just a second. Um, the first, uh, to go with this block of clean data, I'm gonna make a file for my data cleaning scripts. Um, this use this function, use r, doesn't look that useful at this point in what we're doing because all it does is makes a file named cleandata.r and I could have done that um, just with control shift n. Um, but once we get into testing, the use r and test uh, functions from use this make it easy to move back and forth between the relevant test file and the r file. Um, so I, I just get in the habit of use r and you give it the file name and then without the dot r and it goes to either the dot r or the test that file, which will make sense in, I don't know, five weeks or so. All right. So what we're going to do here is uh, the first thing we want to do, and let me make sure I'm not crazy. Yes, is um, I'm going to take all of this and turn it into a function that is just dat is the um, original dat typed through a function we're going to make called um, localize beach. And we're going to move that or put that function over in this clean data. Um, <laughs> I haven't actually really worked with this much, but I played or I've been playing around lately that in our studio, you can just take a block of code that you want to turn into a function and control alt X and you give it a name lies beach and it tries, it does its, it does its best to turn it into a function. Now, um, it is, it's missing. It thinks a lot of things are variables that aren't variables. And I, I'm really kind of surprised at some of the ways it's missing, but it did put original dat in there and I didn't have to type much. So kind of cool, I guess. Um, and to make this a function, the one thing I'm going to do instead of assigning it to dat, I, I try to like minimize uses of pipes and that is the thing we're return, returning. It's just this left join of original dat and lookup table. At work, we have a policy that we wrap things oops, in returns explicitly, um, just to make it clear, uh, you know, especially if you've got some like ifs or switches or different things to, to be able to see where the actual return is coming from. Uh, you don't need that. That's just a thing I tend to do. So, oops, so there we go. We've got our first function. And in theory, let's see, uh, <laughs> there was a little preview there. So we, we build again and we build our uh, vignette. And up oh, there's the sad trombone, trombone again of that function exists, but it doesn't actually exist. Like our package hasn't told the universe that it has that function. And we'll get into this a lot more next week, but the, the minimum version of that is we're just gonna put this special symbol at the top that says oops, export. And then when we rebuild, uh, there's a package called Roxygen that, well, Roxygen 2 technically, that just takes care of this for us. And when we put that export thing, it does all the work that's needed to actually export it. And so now we've got our first function, localized beach, is in this within package and it works. Uh, this, that particular function is adding this um, English column um, and it's doing its thing. So is that making sense so far? 
or is rather is that not making sense to anyone? Anyone have any questions? All right, oops. And again, I just stage all these things and added localized each. All right, and so now, since that seemed to go pretty well, I'm gonna do this again with Salsify temp. I'm going to take this stuff that was down here and make another function. So let's pull that out. And again, just paste it in, control alt X and say Salsify temp. And again, it got all these extra things that aren't actually variables, but it got dat, so that's cool, I guess. And um, again, I just need to return a thing, so I don't need to assign it. And I like to clean things up, so I get rid of the pipe. And again, we could wrap this in return, but it's only the one thing. It's just the one function call. Um, but then the other thing that they show in the way that they break it down, and you know, there's some merit to this, is instead of this um, manual conversion to temp, uh, from Fahrenheit to Celsius, Fahrenheit to Celsius, they make a function f to c. Now I'm putting it in a, um, or I put a dot at the beginning. This is a thing that I borrowed from the the Google R style guide that you put a dot at the beginning of functions that you're not going to export. And it's just useful to you that it tells you this is an internal function and it's in the package, but it's not uh, exported outside of the package. I think we get into this a lot more in the namespace chapter, but the general, um, the general rule is export as little as possible because once you export something, you have to continue to like support that function in whatever, you know, whatever that means for you. Um, and so, for example, this F to C is just a function that we're using internally, but we don't, it's not a thing that the package provides. Does that kind of make sense? I hope. All right. And so I'm going to rebuild the package. I'm exporting the Salsify temp, but I'm not exporting that internal function. And when I rebuild this, or re-knit rather, um, again, it works. All my temperatures are down into Celsius. Uh, I've got my beaches, no errors. Um, so cool. Does that make sense again so far? All right. And again, I'm going to commit this and I'm going to be lazy and just stage all and say uh, added salsify temp. Oops, and I actually did commit my CSVs that I meant to ignore, but whatever. All right. Um, so now our, our first block is done. It works. It uh, does all the data cleaning. Um, for now, at uh, least, we're going to leave it that way. Yeah? Sorry, can I ask you a question real quick? Sure. For for the the like the um the Fahrenheit to Celsius function, if if I was using your package, let's say, and I wanted to uh, debug and look at the call stack, would that appear? Yes. So let's look at um. Let's actually run these things, and we can look at. Well, let's look at um depending how you want to look at it. So, so let's say like, uh, my favorite is to F2 and that doesn't work in this context because we're inside of the package. So it actually yeah. goes to the file, but if yeah. we were outside of the package, it would load this definition and then you could see the F to C and you could further go in and see that function. Um, if you look at, it's not available. Like if we look at, uh, anything in dplyr, um, oh, that's all used methods, but, but okay. Um, uh, that's not mutate.data frame. All right. So let's say 
but going to that, it has all of like mutate calls. That's not an exported function, but we can go and see what that exported function or that unexported function is, um, et cetera. So it is, it's available. You actually can um, reference it as I did right here. The triple, triple dot is an unexported function. Um, or sorry, triple colon lets you see all the functions, whether they're exported or not from a package. You should sure. never use them directly because they might go away in the next version. Um, but you can see them, you can see how it works. And that's, I do that often to learn, like to see how they did something. Um, yeah, so did that answer it? Yes, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. All right. So now, so that works. Um, let me go back to my notes. Uh, we did the Salsify temp. And then we're going to do the same thing for the right data. So again, I just do use this. Oops. Use our right data. And I'm going to take um, basically all of it and in, um, I'm going to say that the out file gets uh, make out file path in file. We're going to just make a function that takes all this stuff, this boilerplate that we do every time, and just creates a path based on the out or the in file. So we go over here again, just paste it. We say make out file path. Um, that function name is a little. I don't know, a little weird. I obsessively always make my functions verbs and I don't care about them being long because our studio are autocompletes. So, you know, once this is in the package, I could do uh, within colon colon make and it would type out the rest of that name for me. So I don't care that it's long and it tells me exactly what it does. Um, and so it takes the current timestamp formats it, cleans up the file name, and then uh, returns the out file path. So that that would work. Um, in the chapter, in chapter six, they like intentionally do this outside of the function. Um, and the reason they do that is to tell you not to do that. That yes, you can define things outside of the function and it'll just be defined in your package. But that anything that's defined outside, anything that's defined, you know, anything that, that is at the top level runs when you build the package. So if we did this, and I guess I can actually show this, um, you know, we put this here. Now, now is a variable that's available in our package. We could do that. It, it, there's nothing inherently broken about it. And it'll build. And we will... Oh, this error, I thought I had solved it. I don't know what's going on here. Um, that's not a normal thing. I'm sorry about that. Let me oops, move this window so I can get this. I didn't try to start a new thing. Um, there is a bug either in my instance of our studio or this particular version of our studio that occasionally I run out of RAM. I don't know what's up with that. Um, <laughs> but now we can build and it'll be fine. And hopefully it doesn't start happening all the time again, like it was earlier. Okay. Um, so now that worked, it's fine. We've got this uh, now variable. And if we're careful, like what we will see if I can uh, wait long enough is I built this at 739. And if we run this at 740, it will still have 739 as its timestamp. Um, we'll be able to tell that. Actually, we'll be able to tell it now because it'll be you know, the early half of 739. So let's see when we do this control shift K, uh, it, oh, we can't tell there because I forgot to show the out file, but the file name is at 739, 21 seconds. And it was basically 740. And if I run it again now, and actually if I'm smart and I say, let's show us the out file name and let's not write the file, oops. Um, Uh, can you just files. run within triple colon now in the console? Uh, you actually you could, and and so again, but so now this function that we made will always put this twenty twenty ten twenty 
1939-21 at the start of the file name every single time. And the point is, that's not what we were trying to do. We were trying to put a timestamp on it. Or if we do within now, there it is. And it's always that, no matter what. Um, so that's why you don't put, don't define things outside of functions uh, accidentally. Like there are cases where it makes sense to do it, but don't do it thinking that it's going to run every time. Uh, likewise, likewise, they use this format thing to show where they just set that as the format of times. And that's also bad because you're doing that for everything in the person who installs your packages uh, session, at least session, maybe even more than session. Don't do that. That You don't want to mess with someone's way of formatting times. Um, but all right, so we've got that. And then the other the other thing just to do as a sample is let's say, you know, instead we're gonna say timestamp gets pretty timestamp. And we'll write that function as just this pretty timestamp. Um and it just returns that, so that works. And we could say, oh, the clean path, let's get do 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 path and we can just define that as an internal function um i don't have a good rule of when to do these other than like i, I usually don't do these until i'm going to call them the second time at least but sometimes i'll do it if i have a function that's just hard to read and split out some of these things into internal functions and then you just kind of assume, okay, pretty timestamp. It, it makes a pretty timestamp. I don't have to look at what the code is. It makes a lot more sense when these are more than two lines of code. Um, but yeah, so there's that. And then if we wanted to like really make things nice and condensed, we can just put the calls right there in, oops, in our paste. And it's it's pretty readable right there. And it's just nice and short and clean and on the page. And so again, we do a control shift B, we rebuild our function. We uh, do a read and yeah, I'm not going to file or not going to save the file again, but we're going to see what the file would have been. And I don't know what I did. Oh, um, this is based on the in file. So I need to actually include that in the call. And this is taking the name of the in file and making an out file name. And so now when we try that again, there we go. And it makes the out file name and it is now, it's not uh, four minutes ago. Um, and it does its thing. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment that, get rid of all these extra files that I made while we were talking and run it one last time. And again, I'm just doing control shift K to knit each of these times. It's making the file, it's uh, writing it because that's you know what we're doing in this particular package. And it writes it local to the vignette and we check and see. Um, all right, so yes. So now we have like this vignette and it's done and it does everything that was in chapter six. And it's not much of a package because, well, I mean, it's not bad. It's, it cleans the file the same way every time. Again, I probably personally would like turn all of this into a function because you want to read and clean the file the same way every time, but that's the basic ideas. Anyone have any questions so far? All right, I'm gonna do one more step. And that is the, the real use of doing things this way is now I've got a second thing that has to do with the same project, but it's not quite the same project. Let's say that we um, we always send a thank you when you know we send a thanks when someone submits a temp. Um, and we've got uh, a sample submission and it is, you know, um, 
it's a tibble with someone uh, on a beach um, saying that the temp is 92. And now we can say, oh yeah, okay, I need to localize beach. I already wrote for the other one. And I need to salsify temp, which I did for the other one. And now when I do that, oops, I look at submission. Oops, yeah, it is uh, right there and it does the same thing. And like, I, I had a whole thing that I wrote out, but um, I don't wanna go through the process that, you know, then we could like load our data and compare to uh, the average and send them a message based on, oh, you're higher than average, you're lower than average. But the idea is we've got these functions and we can just reuse them um, in our next little piece of analysis that we're writing. Uh, I don't know about you, but even when I'm not working in a package, I tend to write things in RMDs. So writing it in a vignette in a package just packages it. Now I can move it to another computer. I can share it with someone. Um, yeah. Oh, and so the other thing that I uh, would do, but I don't want to take the time to do is I would totally, well, I'll just show you the basic idea of, um, you know, why, why have two functions? We can just make a clean swim data and we can say, oops, that clean swim data is just those. Uh, oops, and I forgot to leave the dat in there. So yeah, and uh, if we export that, now either one, you know, both of our vignettes could just use that one combined function. The idea is each time I work on it, I, I find it some little, something to make a little better uh, and it improves the whole pipeline. Um, and that's the idea. So let's see. All right, so we have learning objectives. Hopefully, I mean, you might not have gotten it all from this, but you can rewatch this, you can read the chapter, that you understand the idea of organizing your scripts into objects and functions. Um, you can separate your analysis from helper functions. The helper functions are basically, uh, well, they're everything, all the functions we pulled out. Um, you can recognize some of the errors that can occur when we convert a script to a package, like uh, referring to a package that you don't have available. Um, you can recognize that top level R code is executed when a package is built. So that was that now thing that it, it executes at the time the package is installed. Um, you can be mindful, don't change people's state. Um, they have a whole thing in the chapter about it, but the general idea is just don't do that without consulting the user. Uh, and then for the vignette stuff, the vignette is a long form guide to your package. It's showing what you can do with your package. You can create a vignette with use this. Uh, there are metadata fields in the vignette. You mostly don't have to worry about them. Use this takes care of them. Markdown allows you to format vignettes and uh, you can intermingle our code in your vignette and you can view your vignette with control shift K. And I left some check marks off of that because we didn't really go into it, but it, it was there. Does anyone have any questions? Anything that they wish they could see? <clears throat> Anyone? Anyone? Oh. John, do you do you want to comment on, uh, I guess, an argument of like the last example you showed, packet putting those that you know two function pipe into its own function? Yeah. Uh, you know, how far is too far that you're kind of <laughs> obscuring? what is actually happening so it's clear you know just in that rmd but as an end user trying to understand okay well, what's happening now i have to go through another layer of functions kind of track what's happening yeah how, how much is too much um it depends a lot like i feel like this is the idea of this is i'm imagining that i am doing these this swim loading every day and I don't want to call five functions and remember, or two, even, well, technically it's three because they have the read R call in there. I don't want to do those, rewrite those every day. Like I want one function that does the thing that I do every day. 
so I totally would wrap the read R call into the function as well um, and specify the columns and set up tests, to make sure that the columns are what I, I expect them to be, all of that. Yes, it obscures what I'm doing, but then it doesn't make me, re you know, it, does, it makes it harder for me to skip a step accidentally to miss a step. And so, would you be, would you be commenting all these extra little functions you have that are just combining other functions or do you only comment this or? Oh, I, I document even my unexported functions personally. So yes, I would document them and then they make sense. And usually like I, I actually was a little torn of if I were doing this for real, would I leave localized beach and Salsify temp here in this vignette? I think I probably would. And then say like, you know, um, or you can do the same thing with <laughs> uh, clean swim data and do that gets original that, you know, something like that. Um, or that two and do like identical that that two, something like that. Um, it, I don't know, like I don't have a hard, fast and rule, hard and fast rule of when to do it, but I tend to try to make it where um, it's more about readability than it is about understanding the code because anyone who needs to understand the code should be able to track through the code and understand it. Right. I, I guess I get to, the, I mean, it's good that you do document your internal functions, but like, you know, trying to go through a trace back of anything in the tidyverse, it quickly gets into internal things and they're not documented and it's not clear. Yeah. You know, yeah. what this function is supposed to be. I mean, you could, it takes a little while, you can figure it out, but it'd be a lot better if it wasn't that way or if it had more reasonable it's, naming conventions. <laughs> so, I, what's actually happening. I think that applies more to like programmers than users a lot of the time. Like, you're trying to figure out how they did it, but in most cases, you don't necessarily care how they did it just that it works um oh, it doesn't. so that's where and, and especially you know most package writing i do is for me and a couple of other people at work um and we review each other's code so we know how it works like so there's that um i don't know i think that is definitely a uh like an area where there can be arguments that I would agree with both people who are making the arguments. It just depends on the case. That's the longest function name you've ever used. Oh, uh, some of the ones that work get to be pretty, I mean, not, not totally insane, but probably, I mean, I've definitely done trying to like visualize it. I've done at least 40 characters, um, probably more. You don't have to worry about the, uh, the line width? Uh, a little bit, because we also, <laughs> we try to stick to, it, to 80 characters or less. Um, a couple things I didn't actually get into in here. Something I like to do just as a um, tracking thing is when I'm writing RMDs in general, but especially in vignettes, uh, a tip I learned was use carriage return after periods, not spaces and not double spaces for sure. Carriage return because then GitHub or Git and GitHub can tell what changed and it's a lot better at telling you what changed. Um, it didn't really come into play here, but when you're writing a vignette, just put, put carriage returns at your periods and then you'll, you'll be able to tell what you have changed from version to version. Um, And that, I'm sorry, that that the 80 character rule reminded me of that because it also fits nicely in the 80 character rule that way. <laughs> What's a carriage return again? Enter. Oh. It's a it's an old old man term because it's it's when you make the typewriter go back to the left. 
Okay, boomer. <laughs> Not a boomer. <laughs> Damn kids, get off my lawn. All right, anything else? Uh, next week, uh, John Leslie is going to show us kind of like the less uh, less hand wavy, less rushed through version of some of this and, and how to export things and how to document, I think is in there. Um, I had to like, resist the urge to show some of the documentation i i'd never you know i would never just just export like we have here um that's why that failed all right um that you know it just says export well if you're in our studio you can do is it control shift alt r and it puts the documentation block which includes export but it's all the other prettiness that you should be doing but we'll learn about that next week um, yeah. Any questions? Anything? I think we'll probably get it to it next week. Do you not use import from? You usually namespace all the functions. Yeah, there? they. Um, I think that's Hadley's preference because it's in the first edition of the book too, and I picked it up. I like it. Uh, like I don't know. People say it makes things less readable. I totally, totally disagree with that that I think it clearly tells you where the function came from. So it's so more reproducible. It teaches you as you're reading it. I, I never write, like I almost never use library in my normal work. I always uh, namespace because I just think it makes the code way more understandable. And I know, like I admit, I am in the minority on that. Um, except, except for things like, the, you know, any operators. Right. right. Yep. Yep. And that's why I use pipe is beautiful. And uh, there are a few other cases where, you know, like, and pronouns, which I didn't go into here, but um, the data pronoun from dplyr, which we technically should be using, uh, those things I import. And, and I would totally just do that as, you know, import from our lang data. Um, But for the most part, I, I namespace all the time. I think if they would gray out like the package name, I would not mind it, but I, I find it very distracting. So the code review. Especially thing, on stuff that like the whole team uses dplyr. Oops. It's just our bread and butter. Right. Like, I know where mutate came from. Yeah, yeah. I really mean that's name, fair. Really namespace non the you things should, that are outside should. of our Throw, throw that up on uh, our studio forums as a suggestion for improvement. Agree. So one thing that honestly it helped me, and it, you know it's a little silly, but I decided that the colon colon is pronounced as apostrophe s, so d pliers mutate, and then it doesn't look as weird. It's not d plier colon colon mutate. It's d pliers mutate, and then reading through code you don't stop every time you get to one. You go, you know, uh, dplyers if else, oh, okay. Not not the base if else, it's dplyers if else. Okay, I got it, dplyers left join, okay. Um, I don't know, again, maybe that's just me, but I found that really helpful for reading code to just start, you know, read ours, uh, read ours, read CSV. Oh, okay, okay, not, not the base read CSV, I got it. Your mileage may vary. What you were saying that it needs to be grayed out? Mine gets colored differently. Yeah, I just really? find it distracting. Mm. Um, like all my all my text editors, I gray out the table the table names on my SQL code. Like I just it's like context, but it's not like the the meat of what I'm trying to work on. So I always just uh, make it less less distracting to my eyes. Yeah, I um, guess you could set that in the theme setting. I think I'd have to make my own custom theme to do it. Fair, but yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Again, that's I know I'm probably in the minority, but uh, a coworker and I both started doing where we just namespace everything, and so we read each other's code, and we just it, it never looks weird. 
Yeah. Um, and I think to Tan's point, yeah, I just realized my my whatever theme I'm using does do that. It has a, a different color. Yeah. Which helps helps distinguish it. I, actually, I I think I would like that. So interesting. Change your theme. Yeah. Our themes. I like our themes. Uh, yeah, Garrett made one. I think it's. Oh, it makes sense. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty. It's the one I kind of settled on as my one dark theme. So. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Uh, this package, yes, is available on GitHub. Um, I'm putting it in the, the Slack channel. Um, it's John the Geek slash within. And in theory, all the commits are like the steps to doing the package. So if you want to kind of walk through and see what we did, it should be there. Um, if I screwed anything up and I look at it later and realize that I missed some commits, then um, I may destroy the, the repo and recreate it, but it should still be there at some point. Right. Um, we don't have anyone set for the week after next, which is uh, testing. Does anyone want to take uh, automated testing and automated checking? So that's, so just context wise, that's both writing a test and then automating um, the test in like GitHub Actions. I think we, we decided that that would be something good to set up in one go. Yes. And, and um, it's also talking about things like uh, all the um, CRAN checks and all those things. And I just realized that I didn't have my uh, my chat open, so I didn't see all the stuff that was coming up while I was working. Um, I do see, though. Yes, I totally thought of I like I, I wanted to um, push for Tyler's colonoscopy package. Totally takes care of all the the namespacing, and so you don't have to think about it. <laughs> Highly recommend. But I don't have to worry about it because I just think in those now. So the other thing is when you do the, you know, if you do dplyr colon colon, it, you know, let's say I can't remember if it's um, add row or I don't know, it, though that's not a really good valid one. But I can't think of a, you know, if it's some function that you kind of know what it is, like you can just say count and it shows you all the ones that have count in it. And I use that all the time, with, you know, use this get oh it's get vaccinate that was the one i was looking for for example um vaccinate yes that's actually a good one to do because it sets up all your um ignores for all of your projects in our studio so that it ignores files that you don't want to accidentally check into your repos um i do recommend that one ah interesting I never use that because I always set my repos from GitHub so that it always uses the R standard stuff from there. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Tyler, you want to do testing? Uh, were it not for the fact that I'm actually moving in three weeks, oh. I'm going to have to pass. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> David, Jake? I don't write enough tests in my existing R packages. It's something, <laughs> one of the reasons I joined this group is for the, the it's section. Actually a good testing, opportunity so. to take it. That actually can oh, make, maybe. that can be good for, a good reason to present it. You really like internalize it. All right, yeah, maybe. Uncomfortable with All that. right, we'll talk about it next week too, no. but uh yeah, I, I would recommend it. And oh, I, the last one is, yes, Tyler, I do have a shortcut for the export because it's Control-Alt-Shift-R and it fills in the whole uh, rock I think it's just too much. Somehow, I, I sometimes do just do the export and I don't I want almost to. never do just export. Um, or I maybe I just want to export. I don't write anyone else. As, <laughs> for methods, I do. But it's, no, it's I, like, so I... I do the documentation pretty obsessively of everything and it's not for anyone else. It's because I'm a forgetful old man 
and I will forget what this sub function is supposed to do in three months. So write that okay, documentation right. and you'll know what it does. And what am I saying? Three months is like no time anymore or it's forever. <laughs> I don't know. But in a year, <laughs> I won't know what it does. If I had written it in January, I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes, I document everything. Uh, That's a good whether, yeah. And whether it's just for me or not. All right. Well, I'll see everyone in the channel. And yeah. uh, nice talking to you. Good. Thanks, John. Yeah. See you.